Hi all, and uh, welcome back to the Australian Reptile Park. Jake here. Um, I'm one of the reptile keepers here at the park, but uh, right now I'm doing exactly what I spend the vast majority of my afternoons at least doing, and that is milking funnelweb spiders. Now, the spider we work with here at the park, the funnelweb, is the Sydney funnelweb, or Atrax robustus. And as the name implies, they are found within the greater Sydney region. Their range starts at about Newcastle in the north. They extend down through the central coast to us here, and then extend further south down to the Sutherland Shire, and then west to Lithgow in the Blue Mountains as well. So basically, they live right throughout the Sydney region. And uh, they are undoubtedly the country's world's, oh sorry, the country, and perhaps one of the world's most dangerous spiders. And uh, they are a spider that does bite people. They are incredibly toxic, and as a result, there is an antivenom which needs to be produced for this species. Without an antivenom available, a bite from a male Sydney funnelweb at least um, would be considered uh, highly likely to be fatal. They are a very, very dangerous spider. Now the milking process is fairly simple. What we do, we get the spider to stand up, as this one is here. You may be able to get in uh, nice and close. We're gonna look at some closer shots uh, later on as well. Basically what they do, they stand up and they expose their fangs. Now, the fangs of a Sydney funnel web are extremely long. We milked an eastern brown snake uh, just a few days ago. An eastern brown snake has fangs about two millimetres in length. Very, very tiny fang on a very, very large snake. This is quite the opposite. Very small animal, but extremely large fangs, close to a centimetre in length. Now, those fangs are so large that if they were to basically protrude uh, forward and stick down, the spider would drag the fangs along the ground as it moves. So they tuck up underneath almost the, the chest or the stomach area. And so in order to bite something, they have to stand up like that and then they can expose the fangs. It's only once they're standing up that they can really use their fangs. Now when they're really annoyed, and this one is here right now, um, they will begin to secrete tiny drops of venom just on the tip of each fang. It may be very, very hard to see, but uh, there is actually a drop of venom just on that fang closest to me. Now it's a very, very tiny drop, but what we do, um, we use this little glass pipette here, and this just essentially acts like a little bit of vacuum cleaner, and we can remove that venom uh, from the fang as it appears. It just sucks the venom off the fang. Now I'm going to go through here and just grab that tiny drop there, and you'll notice what I do, I kind of almost touch the spider on the front legs, and occasionally I'll also blow onto the spider. There's just a couple of tricks that we use get the spider to produce that little bit more venom. Because whilst they do have an incredibly toxic venom, they only produce a very, very small amount of it. In fact, we actually have to milk about 150 funnelweb spiders to make one vial of antivenom. So, the more we can get from each individual, the better, the less spiders we have to milk, which is obviously a safer option for us. Now, I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a tiny amount of venom in the end of the pipette, just near my finger there, and that would be enough to kill maybe three or four people from this one spider, just a couple of drops, incredibly toxic. Now that's the, uh, the milking process, a bit of a demonstration for you. And as I mentioned, we do it um, once a week, so we'll milk these spiders once a week, and then after that they go onto the shelves behind these black curtains behind me, and that way they're kept nice and dark and secure. Typically a nocturnal spider, they're moving around at night, so basically we not like to keep them nice and dark and that way they can feel as comfortable as they possibly can and they're only interacted with from us on a weekly basis. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna turn this microphone off, I'm gonna come out to you. I've actually got another male on web sitting out in our spider world and uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about these spiders. So I'll see you in about 15 seconds. So guys, Jake's just coming on his way out now. So please get your questions ready, send them through to us so we can pass them on to Jake. He's also going to do a first aid demonstration with the pressure immobilization bandage. So that's what you need to do if you are bitten by a funnel web spider and Jake will show you what to do. And look, here he is now. Okay. I'm back. All right. Now, we've got a male funnel web here. This one, like the other one, is standing up in that typical defensive stance. In fact, this one's putting on a couple of strikes for us as well. Now, you may be able to see those fangs now that it's standing nice and tall. 
and as I mentioned, extremely large fangs. And they use those, of course, to subdue their prey, but also as a defense. If something were to basically try and predate on this spider, potentially if the spider felt uh, in danger for its life, then it's gonna use its fangs and its venom as a mode of defense. So they're using their fangs and their venom not only to subdue their prey, but also to defend themselves if they need to. And that is how most bites occur with funnelweb spiders. Say you're out in the backyard, you might be gardening, you've just ripped up a plant, perhaps there's a funnelweb spider down in a burrow beneath it. The spider becomes exposed, um, its burrow's been exposed, and as a result, it feels very threatened. It's gonna defend itself the only way it knows how. Same deal if it were hiding in the bottom of a shoe or on, amongst some clothing. That spider is gonna feel uh, quite defenseless really, and uh, it needs to protect itself as best it can. Now you can see the spider moving around there. Uh, male funnel webs for the most part tend to move far more than a female. The females are the larger of the two. They might get up to about seven centimeters. Whereas you can see this one here is about four centimeters in length, and this is quite a large male. So the male is the smaller of the two, but the far more dangerous, and also the one you are far more likely to encounter. During the summer months, particularly when we get a bit, a bit of rain during summer, the males, they'll leave their burrows and they start to move around in search of the females. This typically happens between October and April. That's your funnel web spider season. Now they'll leave their burrow, they start to move around, and in the process, they can often come into contact with people. They venture into backyards, occasionally they'll fall in backyard swimming pools, and very occasionally they may enter the house. This isn't a common thing, but what is a common thing is the spider seeking refuge amongst, say, a wood pole you've got in your backyard, or a pair of shoes, pile of clothing, as I mentioned. And the reason for this, I mentioned before, they are a strictly nocturnal spider. Say that spider's walked a few hundred meters that night, he might be a little bit too far from his burrow to get back before the sun rises. If this spider is caught in direct sunlight out during the day, he will die quite quickly. They are quite susceptible to high temperatures. So he does have to find somewhere nice and tight and secure to hide temporarily until he can get back to his burrow. And that is typically when they'll head uh, for those things that I mentioned, shoes, pile of clothing, um, and of course, areas in your house, your laundry, your bathroom, they're quite cool. So the spider will seek out those areas um, to basically wait out the day. Um, do you want to go through the first aid for a funnel web spider bite? Absolutely. Um, before I do that, I will quickly touch on a few of the symptoms that would occur if you were bitten by a male funnel web. The male funnel web, as I mentioned, is far more toxic than the female. And his venom is what we call a neurotoxin. So it affects your central nervous system. Essentially what the venom does, it stops messages being sent between your brain and your muscle. Now this is typically gonna start with the eyelids, the tongue, droopiness of the eyelids, the inability to speak. And then of course, as it makes its way throughout the body, your diaphragm will become affected. That's your big muscle in your chest that controls your breathing. And of course, if that's being affected by the venom, breathing is going to become very, very difficult. So basically what you wanna do is slow down the onset of those symptoms. And you can do that by applying uh, a pressure bandage. I'm gonna pop this spider down. We do have a bandage right here. This is a bit of a fancy one. It's got these little green uh, rectangles on it. These basically tell you the correct tension to apply the bandage if you were to be bitten by a funnel web spider or any of our Australian venomous snakes. Right now they're rectangles, but when the bandage is applied to the appropriate tension, which is about the same tension for a sprained ankle or wrist, those rectangles turn into squares. So it is very, very hard to go wrong uh, with these newer bandages. But if you've got an older one that doesn't have anything on them, same tension as a sprain. Now, if I was bitten on the finger here by a funnel web spider, what's gonna happen likely is the spider will actually become embedded in the skin. Because their fangs are so large, often a funnel web spider actually has to be physically removed once it's bitten something. It's a horrible thing to think about. Um, you never ever want to go through that, but that is the reality of a funnel web spider bite. Once that's happened, um, you're going to have two quite obvious uh, fang puncture wounds. You would then bandage over that bite site two or three times, again, about the same tension as a sprain, and I would then extend the bandage. I've already basically covered toward the end of the arm. Um, you wanna leave a little bit of fingertip exposed, that way you can see what color they are. If they're going black or blue, you do probably have that bandage on a little bit too tight. 
but at the same time, it's better to have it on tight than far too loose. If it's loose and falling off, not gonna be doing much to slow the movement of that venom. That is what you are attempting to do, slow the movement of venom throughout your system and slow the onset of those symptoms. I would then bandage up toward the top of the limb. I've got a watch on here today. Get rid of that, any rings, bracelets, any jewelry you might be wearing at the time on the limb, take it off. You then go up over your shirt if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt like I am today, head right to the shoulder. You would then immobilize the limb, immobilize the victim and get them off to hospital as quickly as you possibly can. You do not want to muck around and dilly dally with a funnel web spider bite. There have been recorded deaths um, in adult humans in just over an hour from male funnel web spiders. They are a very, very serious um, spider with a very, very toxic venom. Now, fortunately, we have not seen a single death since the antivenom was released to hospitals. That was way back in the early 1980s. So 40 years now, we haven't seen a single death from a male funnel web, and we've never seen a single death uh, from a female. So not a funnel web death in over 40 years, a very good result, we think, and uh, we're very proud because we do play a very large role in the antivenom process through the milking of the spiders. We are the only uh, facility in the country that milks these spiders, and that's basically because we sit right in the middle of their distribution. It's very easy for us to acquire uh, large numbers of funnel webs, mostly through public donation, people catching them as they encounter them and donating them to us here at the park. Are those donations still coming in? They are, yes, yeah. Even though we are uh, unfortunately closed at the moment and you cannot visit the park, you can still donate the spiders either to us uh, directly here or we do also have drop-off points right throughout the Sydney region. So if you live a little further afield, say you're up in Newcastle or you're down toward Wollongong, you can still drop your spiders into any of your major big hospitals and they will eventually find their way up to us here at the park. We go and pick those spiders up and that way we can include them um, in our venom program. And it is important for us to have a variation as well. We don't wanna just have our central coast funnel webs, we wanna have them from all over the place and that way we can basically produce an antivenom that is very effective uh, across the spider's range. Do you milk females as well as males? We can milk the female if we need to, uh, but we only do it for demonstration. The process is the same, they'll stand up, they'll produce the venom, but as I mentioned, the venom is not as toxic, so when we're milking for the antivenom, we do only milk the male, and that way, um, we are producing the highest quality antivenom that we possibly can. If you were to milk the females exclusively, uh, that antivenom would not work all that well on the male funnel web because they do have uh, slightly di different symptoms, or sorry, different effects on the body. So um, it doesn't work that way, but it works the other way. The male the venom being used to produce the antivenom works uh, well on a female bite if you were to receive that. So the spider you had out before was a male. Is that as large as they get? It's not quite as large as they get. It's certainly average size, maybe even a little bigger than average. Um, but we have seen male funnel webs that uh, can get up to about maybe that length. So it's not huge, um, but certainly large enough. And it doesn't really matter what size they are. Um, if they're big enough to bite you and inject venom, which they could do um, at potentially six months or a year of age, um, then they are just as dangerous as one another. We get lots of questions about funnel web spiders affecting pets. Yep. Um, can you go through their venom and what animals they do affect? Absolutely. So the venom of the funnel web spider is very specific and it's a little bit weird in the way it works. Um, it works very, very well on their insect prey. Typically in the wild, they're feeding on crickets and cockroaches and worms, that sort of thing. It'll of course kill those animals quite quickly, very quickly. Um, but it also seems to be very, very toxic on primates and humans. Um, a bit weird, we don't have any primates native to Australia, aside from humans, um, and we only, sorry, funnel web spiders are only found in this country, they're not found anywhere else in the world. So we don't quite know why they've evolved to be so toxic on primates, but they are. Something like your cat or your dog, our native mammals, like a kangaroo, koala, um, a rabbit, they could be bitten by a funnel web spider and they would show very, very few symptoms. Um, you could then be bitten by the exact same spider and be in very severe, a life-threatening condition very quickly. So the venom is very specific on how it works and it's not the same uh, for your pets as it is for you. Interestingly, the Australian bird-eating tarantula or whistling spider is the opposite way around. Very, very toxic on pets, could kill them quite easily, um, but on humans, not so much. So uh, the venom is different and it affects in different ways. 
What's the distribution of the funnel web in Australia and are they found everywhere? So there's about 43, 44, potentially even more undescribed species of funnel web found uh, along the east coast. And that is where they are found and only where they're found. From Tasmania up into Queensland. Um, so you're not gonna find funnel web spiders out in central Australia over in WA. They're only along that eastern belt. And within the Sydney region, we don't just get this robustus species, the Sydney funnel web. We do also get a couple of other ones. In fact, we do have um, one that has a very small distribution uh, locally to us here at the reptile park, the Summersby funnel web, which was actually um, first found and, and described here on the site of the reptile park. So what's their lifespan like? Very different depending on whether we're talking about a male or a female. Uh, the females, they get a bit bigger and they can live a lot longer. About 20 years potentially for a female if she were to go through her life without interacting with uh, people or anything, you know, birds, anything that could uh, make a meal out of her, she could live for 20 years. The male, uh, not so lucky. He might live for three or four years maximum. And the reason for that, any male spider really, their job in life is to grow up, breed with females and then die. It's just the way it works. Now that male is gonna become sexually mature at about two years of age. He'll head out um, and he'll try and find a female to mate with, they'll mate. And then typically what happens, uh, if he's lucky, he might get away from that female, but more often than not, that girl will try and eat that male, kill him and, uh, sorry, kill him, but she's not gonna eat him. She'll store him away. And uh, when her babies first touch out, their first meal is generally their own uh, father. So it's a pretty rough life for the male funnel web. You don't live for all that long and typically the way you go out is uh, from your missus killing you. So um, a bit rough, but that's just the way it works. And last question, how many funnel webs do we have here at the Australian Reptile Park? Uh, currently right now, uh, in terms of adult spiders, adult males that we're milking, we have about 300. Ideally, we would have between three, four, potentially up to 500 males for our venom program. And that typically, uh, that number heads right up during summer, the peak season. Now that we're coming out of it, um, that number tends to drop a little bit. But at Funnel Webs as a whole, we have several thousand. We have a big nursery here at the park where we raised uh, juvenile funnel webs and out there we have roughly 3,000 funnel webs. So you could say uh, potentially between three and a half and 4,000 funnel webs here on site. Uh, most people's worst nightmare, but very important work that we do here. We need as many of them as we can possibly receive. And uh, it's a good reminder that if you do find them at your place, um, try and safely catch them up and donate them to us because we do uh, very much appreciate that. We need as many as we can possibly receive. Adults only, right? Adults only, yes. If we can uh, get the adult males specifically, that's really, really great. Because that way we can start milking them straight off the bat as soon as they arrive here and we can get the most amount of venom out of them that we possibly can. Um, we're all about kind of maximizing the amount of venom uh, that we can get out of the collection. Now, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Hope you learned a little bit about our Venom program and our Fun Web Spiders. Um, thank you very much. We've got plenty more videos coming to you all through next week as well. So we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.